Water filtration systems definitely have their place. And when you really have no other means to purify water, having one of these around can be an absolute lifesaver. But I believe they give us a false sense of security around how safe the water is that we drink from them. So here are some of the truths about the water filtration systems that we have on the market today. I don't favor any one water filtration system over the other. I think all of them have got advantages and disadvantages. Um, and the reason why I bought a Sawyer Mini was because I wanted to keep it in my get home bag. It is one of the clearest examples of what I could think of um, would be a scenario where I would need to filter water rather than boil it. And boiling it is always going to be the gold standard for getting clean drinkable water. Fair enough, there are going to be scenarios where you can't carry all of the water that you'll need on you and so you'll need to collect water as you go. And you won't always have the opportunity to stop and boil your water all the time. Completely understand that. But unless you've got something like a Grail Geopress that actually removes viruses as well, I don't believe that something like this should be your gold standard or your go-to. Now while these Sawyer Minis do actually remove most bacteria and protozoa, Sawyer and Life Straw have the disadvantage that they don't filter out viruses like norovirus that causes dysentery. And that's exactly what we want to avoid through filtering our water. So some of the viruses that we have to be concerned about in our water are things like mad cow disease, norovirus, which I mentioned causes dysentery, hep A, hep E, and coronaviruses or viruses like influenza. So here's the practical application. If somebody drinks from a water source, let's say a water bottle, and they accidentally backwash into it and they've got influenza or a coronavirus and you go and attach your Sawyer water filter to it and you drink from that same water source you're likely to get the same virus because this isn't going to filter out that virus the difference between the life straw and the Sawyer mini is that the life straw has a 0.2 micron filter and the Sawyer mini has a 0.1 micron filter so this will filter more out of the water than will a life straw so Sawyer used to make a 0.02 water filter that you could use to also filter out viruses. I don't think that it's available in the market anymore. I've had a hard time coming across it lately. They might have actually discontinued it. Um, but I am aware that Life Straw has one that's called Life Straw Mission, which is also a bag um, that you fill up with water and then through a tubing system and another filter at the end, you can filter your water. However, it's not something that's easy to carry with you though because it's quite a big water filter system that you've got to hang and use gravity feed in order to filter. The Grail Geopress, on the other hand, through electroadsorption and a special filter, does actually filter out viruses. So a Grail Geopress is wonderful for carrying on you um, because it filters out viruses and it's a nice container that you can actually carry your water in. The disadvantage with the Grail is that its lifetime and the amount of gallons that it can filter is not actually that good. To give an example, this Sawyer Mini will filter 100,000 gallons, where a Grail Geopress will only filter 65 gallons through the same filter. That means that if the average male drinks about 3.7 liters of water a day, they're going to have to change that filter five times a year. And they can be quite pricey and it's not very good for the environment to discard all of that plastic all the time. So I don't know if Grail actually recycles those filters. Also, if you don't have access to resources and you're not able to change that filter constantly, but you're constantly drinking from that water filtration system, you're going to end up having a hard time getting a hold of new filters. Now, fair enough, we can't really compare the Grail Geopress with the Sawyer because the one filters out viruses and the other one doesn't. But it's still worthwhile having this on you rather than nothing. In comparison to that, the life straw filters about a thousand gallons in its lifetime and will last the average male about three years if they're constantly drinking through it. Before I go any further, I will add all of the links to all of the water filtration systems that I'm mentioning in this video in the description here. So you can go and check all of them out and see which one meets your needs the best. If you haven't yet, you can check out my video on how to find water in the wild. I'll link it to this video and I use some of the methods employed by the sand people of Southern Africa to find, filter and store water in that video. So if that's the case, then why do I have a Sawyer Mini filter at all? 
Well, it's still better than having nothing. And remembering that I'm in Africa, even if I drink from a spring, I'm going to feel much better putting it through a filter than I am drinking straight from the source. It is also one of the most versatile water filters on the market today, being that you can connect it in line to our hydration pack, you can connect it to the top of a water bottle, or you can drink directly from the source. And you can also pour through it, so it's great for cleaning wounds if you don't have any other materials with you. And if I can't stop to boil water or I'm in a non-permissive environment, then having this is gonna be an absolute lifesaver to me. So how to use one of these? First of all, try to find spring water if you can. Track as far up the river as you can and see if you can find the source of the river because that's gonna give you the cleanest drinking water. This particular river comes way up from the mountain. There's no town or village up there, nothing to pollute the water, but I've still gotta try and see that there isn't a dead animal lying in the stream or something else that could possibly pollute the water. So I'm gonna go upstream a little bit and see if it's clear for drinking. I'm literally bundu bashing here. Check it out. Right, we're going to let water here. Okay, so I've now clambered and bundu bashed all the way up river. I promise you, there is no access further up river I've tried. Um, so this is about as far up river as I'm going to get. So that gives you a pretty good idea of what finding a drinkable source of water in the wilderness is really like. It's not walking up to a river and um, just collecting water from it. And there seems to be a common misconception that clear running water is drinkable water. It's not necessarily the case. So that's why I go all the way up river to see if I can find if there is a dead animal um, lying in the river or if I can see that there's been a person that's accessed the river there. I want to collect water from above that point so that I don't drink that contaminated water. But I'm still going to want to filter it. Okay, so how this works. I can collect water in the bag and um, use that to drink from by connecting the Sawyer that way around onto the bag and then I can drink from that or I can drink directly from the source using a straw. So the reason why I'm going to do the bag is because I want to demonstrate that when you collect water from a river or from any water source, you always collect along with the stream. So the flow of the river is going to go this way. The reason why is if I turn this around, I'm going to get a lot of debris flowing into my bag. In order to further prevent debris from getting in here, I can go and put a handkerchief or a buff or anything like that on top here um, to make sure that no dirt and debris get into my bag. That's going to prolong the life of my filter. Okay, so where I am here, I can access that water. So that's a nice place for me to collect from. Oop, splashing all over the place. Have a look. So I collect with my opening facing down river. Okay. So I've got some water in there. I can go and dunk it even further down if I want to. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach the filter part that's open um, of the Sawyer to the bag here. And then I can drink from that. Um, what's nice about this is I can use it to pour as well. So I can use that to irrigate a wound if I need to do wound care or I can simply drink with it like this. And that actually tastes pretty good too. To keep my water for later is I put the lid on and I've got a water sachet that I can keep in my bag. Well, all that remains now is for me to Bundu Bash back down river and I really hope that you found some valuable information in this video today. Remember to leave a comment and let me know where you're watching from and until the next time, live ready. The average male drinks about 37 litres, 37. <clears throat> Got my mosquito spraying. Oh, I missed it.